Welcome to episode two of my How to Start with Todoist. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to get the most out of what Todoist calls labels and what in David Allen's Getting Things Done book are called contexts. First, I should point out that this feature is a premium feature in Todoist. To activate the feature, you will need to subscribe to the, pari the premium version which is at a fantastically low price of $28.99 a month, or that's less than $2.50 a month. A no-brainer, really, if you truly want to get yourself organized in 2015, or whatever year you're watching this episode. Okay, so what is a label or context? A context or label is a physical place or device you need to be in or have with you in order to complete a task. So, for example, to make a telephone call, you need to have a phone with you. So a task as we have, let's have a look, a task as we have here, call Bill about the inflatable purple frogs, would need me to have my phone with me. Or, clean up old email and archive, I would need my computer. So the call I would sign a label of at phone and for cleaning up my email I would assign a label of at computer. Okay, so while you were away I have added a few more items to my inbox so that I can show you how we can assign a label to a particular task. At the same time I'm going to show you again how you can assign tasks to individual projects. So if you remember from episode one, we created two projects, one project called work and one project called home. In work, we have two. Uh, in fact, actually, let's start with this one. So call Bill about the inflatable frog. Now, in Todoist, all you have to do is assign the at sign or ampersand. Now, I have nothing here. And so... Um, I need to write at phone and press return. Sorry, press escape. And I have now a label of phone, as you can see here. Clean up old email and archive. Let's say at. Now, what you will notice in the drop down menu, I have phone. But clean up old email, I'm going to assign computer. So again, computer. Now, no matches, so press escape to hide autocomplete. If we press escape and then save, again, the label computer has appeared on my list. Now, let's go back up into our inbox and we'll go through this. So finish report on inflatable purple frog feasibility. Now, for me to do that, I could use my iPad. Um, but let's say I have to put in a lot of charts and I find putting charts in is much easier with my computer. So again, we'll put the at sign. And now, because we previously created computer, all I have to do is click on computer and click save. Now, we're going to email finished feasib feasibility report to Bob. Now, this one is one of those things that you can decide for yourself you might want to create a label called email and in this case I think I will so at and then email and press escape and we have at email is created there and now the thing about these labels or contexts are these are highly personal what I mean by this is in the book getting things done David Allen gives you a list of some basic uh, labels or contexts that you may want to use, for example, at home, at computer, at online, offline. There's many, but what I have found is it really does depend on how you work. If you work in an office, maybe you just need at work, at home. If you work a little bit like I do, which is everywhere, uh, I have labels like at coffee shop, and at iPad, at laptop. It's entirely up to you. What you need to do when you're creating these labels is to create labels that work for you. So let's continue in my list here. Call Barney's hairdresser to arrange an appointment for a trimming. Barney is my dog. 
so I'm going to call that one at phone because it's a telephone. Again, I don't have to. Autocomplete allows me to just click on phone. That's done. And da buy David Bowie's Black Star album. Now, I use uh, digital. So this is uh, my iTunes collection is held on my desktop. So this is going to be at computer. So um, at computer. And then I can click save. Now, if you remember what I showed you from episode one, one of the fastest ways to process your inbox is to drag and drop your tasks. So before we do that, I'm going to assign some dates to this one. So finish report for inflatable frogs. I think I'm going to do that on Wednesday. So we can get Wednesday. Uh, email finish feasibility report to Bob. Now I want to do that by Friday. So we'll put Friday. Call Barney's hairdresser for a trimming. Let's schedule that for uh, in three days time. Now the beauty of the natural language parsing in Todoist means I really do not need to think about when three days is. So I can click Friday, that's going to be Friday, and buy David Bowie's Bucks album. I'm going to do that today, uh, this evening, so Todd for today. Uh, I also said that you can assign flags to these, so finish report, this is an urgent thing, so it's going to be red. Uh, email finish report, that's going to be urgent, so that'll be red. Uh, Call Barney's hairdresser's not that important, he's a yellow, and buying David Bowie's black star, and I've got back stare as it's auto-corrected me. Again, he's not a one, so let's get this one changed. Uh, black. Ooh, um, black. Star. And save. What is it? Yes, there we go. Right. Now, as I say, if you remember from my first episode showing you how to set up projects and populate them with tasks, so the easiest way for me, I find, is just to drag and drop. So let's drag that one to work. This is a work one. Drag to work. Um, Call Barney's hairdresser to arrange an appointment is a, is a home project. and Sorry, a home task. And by David Bowie's album is a home task. Okay, so now I've processed my inbox. Let's just have a look in my work folder because I... Oh, yes, we've got them all there. Everything's set up. Check that I've got labels for all these. Ah, take dog for a walk. Uh, that one is going to be, obviously, um, at home. So let's create a label at home. So save that one. And take garbage out is another one for at home. So at home. Again, the autocomplete allows me to just click and save. Let's just check for work. We've got, yes, right. So now, just to show you how this all works, if I go into my labels, you'll see that all my labels have um, appeared in the labels section on the left-hand side. Now, one thing that you can do with your labels is, like with your projects, you can assign a color. So I'm going to call my, I'm going to give my, I have a space gray iPhone, so I'm going to give that a space gray color. Uh, my computer, let's have a look, we'll edit that label and we'll give that. So all I'm doing is clicking on edit and then click on the the label icon. And I'm going to give my account a green, that will do there. Email, don't we all hate email? Let's edit that one, I'm going to give that one a colour of, uh, let's give that one blue. And home, let's give that a colour of, uh, where is pink. Okay, so what you'll notice is if I go into my phone, I can see all the items now that I need to phone. So if I think I've got five or ten minutes free and I want, oh, I've got my phone with me, I can click on my labels phone and I can actually see all the phone numbers that I need to call. Now, a quick tip here, although this is going to be for a later episode, if you move up to the actual task, you'll see that this speech box appears. Click on that and you can type in the number. So, for example, uh, 6789. Let's say that Bob's number is that. I would put Bob's number into the, into the notes section. The reason for doing this is sometimes you wouldn't always have the telephone number at hand, particularly something like calling Barney's hairdresser. It might be something I don't can carry the number with me. So I would put the number into the notes section. But that's just for something that will come up later. I'll go into notes, but just a quick tip for you. 
Uh, if I've got my computer and I'm thinking what can I do, again I can just click on the computer label and I can see all the things that need for computer, likewise for email and likewise for home. Now, something I didn't show you in the last episode, which was uh, the functions that I wanted, uh, the today function. So if we go into today, I mentioned about the flagging. Now what you'll see, is this is actually overdue now because it's past 1 p.m., but call Bill about the platable frogs is at the top, as in I gave that the urgent flag, or the most important, and then in descending order, the importance of flags, and they've all come up. Just another quick tip, you can actually click on, if I'm at home and I think, OK, I've got the dog to walk, what else do I have to do? Oh, I have to take the garbage out. You can just click on these little uh, context uh, notes and go straight to the label. So labels are really, really, really useful. And it is just labels alone is worth the $28, $29 um, annual fee simply because it can really speed up the amount of work and also help you to avoid any procrastination. So, there you go. That's episode two, doing labels. I strongly recommend that you go and pay for the extra if you haven't done so already. Pay for the premium version and start putting labels to all your tasks. Remember, don't go crazy with labels because when you start having too many, it becomes overwhelming. Try to keep it as simple as you possibly can. I suggest you spend a week or, or two weeks just adding labels as they come naturally to you. That way you'll find the best version for you. I will go into a more advanced tutorial on labels in a later episode because there are other things that you can do. For example, um, if I wanted to call Bill about the inflatable frogs, I can actually also add a second label and let's say I'm going to call that computer. So now in calling Bill, I also have it at computer, just for example. But more on labels in a later, more advanced uh, tutorial on labels in a later episode. I hope you found that useful. If you did, please share this tutorial. And don't forget to subscribe for more